My childhood was filled with three main things. Trauma. My name? You don't know what my name is? My name is Aura. Pokemon plush. Down here, my new Manti. Woohoo, I got a Manti. And sandbox video games. Games like Minecraft, Terraria, and Starbound let me explore the more creative aspects of my personality. In an outside world that I had very little control over, one I constantly felt trapped in, I had an escape. A place to go when things were tough, which they often were. A place where I could feel safe. A place where I could feel like myself. The sandbox genre that these games fall into is a wonderful one. Being able to poke around a randomly generated world for hours, morphing it into something to call home, something wholly my own, felt great. It felt special. An experience that kept me coming back for hours and hours, day after day. The tools that these sandbox games granted me access to made me feel a sense of safety and freedom that I had been severely lacking in the real world. But the gameplay in these games weren't the main reason I fell head over heels for the genre. That comes down to music. It's December 2nd, 2010. I'm laying in my bed as the gentle glow of my busted-ass laptop floods my face as I hear the funny YouTube men scream about their new favorite game. Minecraft. I don't know why quite yet, but I get the feeling that this game is something special. Something different. A few weeks pass. I'm in a hotel room now, out of town visiting family for Christmas. Deep into the night while my parents are asleep in the bed next to me, I lay on the sleeper near the window. That same familiar glow fills my face, but this time, I'm playing, not watching. For the very first time, I step foot in a world of my own. I wander around for a while, gathering materials, killing pigs, building a house, using all the knowledge I've accrued over the past few weeks of obsessively watching Minecraft Let's Plays. And while I patiently wait through the night in my freshly built wooden box, I start to hear it. Subwoofer Lullaby by C418. In this high-stress time of visiting family and being in a place foreign to my home, Minecraft Volume Alpha, the gentle score that backed this game's early days, puts my mind at ease. Now, this was at a time where I didn't really care for music. It's not that I didn't enjoy music, I just didn't actively search it out. If I heard something I liked, I wouldn't be able to put that into words. Music was just something that wasn't on my radar. This would change, of course, in the next few years, but in my early days of playing Minecraft, I took its score as nothing but its version of the background music that every video game I'd played had. I was wrong to think that. Minecraft Volume Alpha is one of the most reflective, quiet, peaceful soundtracks of any game I've ever played. As the years progressed, and I started to expand my music tastes, Minecraft's score kept coming back as something subconsciously special in my head. Most PC games I played at the time had music that I would turn off and substitute with one of my many Pandora stations. I can vividly remember late night TF2 and Star Wars The Old Republic sessions where I was blasting shit like Skrillex or, or Ellie Goulding. And you know what, honestly, I re-listened to some of that stuff recently, shit is still fire. But anytime I booted up Minecraft though, I found myself closing Pandora. Minecraft wasn't a time for loud, bombastic EDM tracks. It was a place to calm down and reflect. Minecraft's soundtrack, starting with Volume Alpha and continuing through to Volume Beta, helped to foster this soft sense of peace. With careful piano and subtle synth, C418 purposefully created an atmosphere unlike any I'd ever played in before. 
Even with songs like Ballad of the Cats, which plays in Minecraft's very own hell, you never quite lose that feeling of comfort. At its creepiest, Minecraft score feels like you've briefly taken a detour off the beaten path, as opposed to being entirely and completely lost. Hopeless. I guess maybe except 11 and 13, those can go fuck themselves. <laughs> I quickly fell in love with Minecraft. It was my home away from hell. Whenever things got tough, I would turn to my hobbies. I mean, I still do. To my collecting, to my editing, to my gaming, to Minecraft. Every time I would boot up my world, call some friends on Skype, and start building my next big project, that music would kick in and welcome me back. It wouldn't stick around long, but it was there. Something that my little 12-year-old brain needed to hear. It made me feel like everything was gonna be okay even if I didn't realize it or believe it at the time. Minecraft's music was the friend I only saw every once in a while. The buddy who never stuck around for too long, but also somehow never changed. A touchstone to a simpler world where I had the power, and nothing really could hurt me. Terraria was a game I wasn't immediately in love with. I didn't have the drastic, obsessive nature toward it leading up to my first play session like I did with Minecraft. I kind of just tried it out on a whim after hearing rumblings of its release through the Minecraft community. <laughs> this is awesome! Eventually, though, the wackiness of Terraria's world won me over. Along with its spin on what some consider the Minecraft formula, Terraria's lack of tonal consistency in its items compounded by its strangely bombastic soundtrack slowly carved out a new love in my brain. I can even cite my adoration for Terraria as the start to an ever-constant battle I have with my sleep schedule that continues to this day. The first all-nighter I ever pulled was after deciding I wanted to design an infographic for the potion recipes in the game. That was something Minecraft was never really able to do. Its atmosphere, its music, made me relax and take a break from everything else. Terraria was constantly inspiring me to move forward, and its music had a huge part in that. Scott Lloyd Shelley's work on this game's soundtrack is expert at creating an adventurous and suspenseful tone that thrusts you forward through the game's progression-based systems. Most of my time in Minecraft was spent building. I didn't care much about mining or exploring, I enjoyed settling down in one place and constantly expanding my little town. Most of my time in Terraria, however, was spent outside my boring wooden house, exploring the depths of the underground and the dungeons that sat at the ends of my world. Where Minecraft let my intrinsic motivation to play for relaxation thrive, Terraria made my extrinsic motivation to complete tasks and progress toward an ending skyrocket. It was one of the reasons I stopped playing Minecraft as often, because I started to crave the goals and conclusive paths that Terraria had. Minecraft was all about the journey, but Terraria made me want the end. The bite that Terraria's soundtrack has is unmatched in its space. Music is so important in setting a tone, and Terraria's soundtrack, just like Minecraft, sells its intended atmosphere so perfectly, it's crazy. Unlike Minecraft's subtle score that only occasionally pokes its head in to say hello, Terraria's bombastic ballads never stop. Every action I took was backed by a million crunchy synths, letting me know that the adventure I was embarking on was important. Fighting enemies in Minecraft has never really felt all that stressful or difficult, but then again, that's not where that game thrives. Terraria's boss encounters are some of the most suspenseful fights out there, and the score has a huge hand in making them feel that way. Each one of these games has a score that so perfectly encapsulates and nails the best parts of their respective titles. 
each one of these games has a score that so perfectly encapsulates and nails the best parts of their respective titles. But there exists a third game in this category. A game that has far less notoriety than these two titans, but is outmatched when it comes to music. I didn't know how hard I was falling for Minecraft back in 2010 when I first started playing it. I was sort of just existing, and would only later realize how essential that game was in my development. The first time I booted up Starbound, though, things were different. I'd grown up a little. Fresh into high school, starting down the path that would change my life forever, Starbound waltzed its way in. The title theme instantly caught my attention. It made me flash back to the feeling of building a clifftop settlement in Minecraft and escaping my home life's issues. But it also filled me with a sense of greatness that there was adventure to be had, a journey to embark on. After sitting on the title screen and listening to the music for an unusually long amount of time, I decided I should create my character and start playing. So I did, and suddenly, without warning, the music stopped. Dropped into a rusty, broken ship, I was struck with the quiet before a storm that I had no idea was coming. Not knowing what awaited me, I beamed down to my very first planet. And that was it. The second taste of what would go on to become my favorite video game soundtrack of all time. Curtis Schweitzer and Solatris's work on Starbound's massive six-hour-long score is some of the best I've ever heard. Like Terraria's, it never stops during gameplay. Unless you're in your ship, Starbound's music is constantly filling you with equal parts adventure and reflection. Tracks like Vast Immortal Suns make you want to explore Starbound's expansive galaxy and progress through the story. And then you have tracks like M54, which force you to sit and reflect on your journey thus far. Starbound soundtrack has the soft, calming subtleties of Minecraft, along with the towering crunchiness of Terraria. It is the perfect union of the things that made Minecraft and Terraria scores so great. Starbound is a game all about world exploration and colonization. Each planet you go to is randomly generated and is filled with landmarks ranging anywhere from medieval robot castle towns to broken down prisons filled with seemingly racist humans. The exploration side of the game is so perfectly companioned by the more quiet colonization side, however, that you never really feel forced in one direction. Want to blow through the story and live on your ship, never settling down? Cool. Go for it. Maybe you want to stick to a home planet that you always return to and slowly colonize it into a bustling community, a veritable planetary melting pot. That works just as well. Playing Starbound, I never felt pushed to do one thing over another. While remodeling my house or building a new structure on my home planet, I never felt that itch that I'm wasting time and should be progressing. I felt free to do what I wanted. However great Minecraft and Terraria are, they are each underdeveloped in certain huge aspects of their games. Minecraft thrives in building, but lacks in exploration. Terraria, on the flip side, thrives in exploration, but lacks in building. Starbound is expert at both of these. Unfortunately, my time playing Starbound didn't last that long. I stopped playing shortly after I got into it because of a lack of content. The game was very early on in development, having just entered beta, and still reeling from the extrinsic quest-based motivation that Terraria gave me, I was craving an experience that had more to offer. So I left. But something unique happened with Starbound. Something I hadn't done before with any other game. I kept listening to the music. For the past seven years since I discovered Starbound, I've not gone more than a week without listening to at least a little bit of its soundtrack. Whether it's while working, doing chores, driving, buying groceries, whatever. Starbound has never really left my mind. Recently, I decided to boot Starbound up again. After all these years, give it another shot. I knew it would be different, especially because I stopped playing right after they released the content roadmap, which outlined how they would develop the game leading up to launch. And I am so glad I did. Met with that familiar title music that I'd heard so many times before, I started to tear up. I realized something. Starbound has been a quiet favorite of mine for a long time. A friend that made sure I was okay, even though I didn't know they were helping me as much as they were. 
I'm in a place now where I am super aware of my feelings. Back when I played Minecraft and Terraria for the first time, I didn't understand how much they were helping me. I'm glad I've had this chance to recognize those games, and now Starbound, for the parts they played in my life. In a world filled with all the stress and garbage it's filled with, sandbox games are there for us to escape to. Jump into a simpler world that you have the power to influence. Minecraft and Terraria were there for me in a very important time in my life. A time where I was being molded into the person I am today. But they left. Starbound, in a way, has been a constant. Playing it now, it feels like comfort food. A place I can go to decompress after a stressful day, or just hang out with some friends when I need some social interaction. I get lost in the galaxy of Starbound. I'm building a house, or exploring a planet, or doing fetch quests, or petting my little crab friend. And when I'm not playing the game, I listen to the music. The theme's leitmotif kicks in, and I feel at ease. I feel safe, ready for the next day. Filled with the knowledge that, no matter how hard it gets, I'll have an escape, one day at a time. Hey guys, thanks for watching this video. Uh, if you couldn't tell, this topic means a lot to me, um, and I'm pretty nervous about the response to it, so be nice, please. I know this is very different from what I usually do. Maybe I'll do more stuff like this, more genuine stuff. Maybe I won't. Maybe it was bad. Uh, just let me know. Thanks for watching, guys.